Manchester Town Council. Um, before we get started here, we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. Please to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. We do have a quorum tonight. We have uh, two members, Councilman Howe and Councilman Wilder, both on vacation this month. Uh, it is the summer, and we typically come across these things uh, in the summer. Uh, first order of business approval of June 9th, 2015 minutes. So we have a copy. Everybody had an opportunity to read through. Any additions or corrections, comments? Make a motion to approve the June 9th, 2015 minutes. I second the motion. Motion second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, then we have a receipt of the May 2015 Treasurer's Report. And we can handle these together. We've been doing it that way administratively. So just for a matter of form, it's receipt of the May, May Treasurer's Report and the June check register. I'll make a motion that we receive the May Treasurer's Report and the June check register. I'll second the motion. Motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, moving right along, Mayor's Report. A um, couple of issues here. We did have uh, a couple items just to discuss. We did have, like the car carnival in town here. Uh, I'm sure that uh, the, the chief and uh, town administrator Miller will, will hit on that, but it appeared to be a pretty successful event. We had good weather, I think record crowds. Um, so I'd like to congratulate the fire department on a, on a great carnival. Hopefully that went well. Sounds like we had very few issues in terms of the police department. Had a good presence up there. Uh, the fireworks night seemed like it went up pretty well. And, by all accounts, even from things I heard in the community, we got people out of there in about 15 or 20 minutes with, with no issues. Uh, and nobody's foot run over either, so that's always good. <laughs> um, last month, I attended the uh, joint uh, meeting between Carroll County and Frederick County of uh, MML. That was in advance of the Maryland Municipal League Convention in Ocean City, which I attended uh, in addition to Councilman Howe, who's not here. Uh, brief recap, and we'll get into the, the Banner City here a little bit later. Um, but it was, it was pretty successful. I think registration and attendance was down a little bit, as was the, the, the uh, convention hall. But there was still some good core training and networking opportunities there. Uh, attended a mayor's association lunch. Uh, went to uh, trainings and briefings on things, including economic outlook in Maryland, uh, including uh, how to position our town as the economy continues to improve. Uh, let's see, current issues uh, such as uh, municipal financial statements, preparation, revenue recognition, GASB 34 update, and uh, community policing and best practices, some of which I've already brought back and met with uh, the chief about. So we'll have some more information on that, and hopefully more people can attend those things in the future. Uh, we do have a, uh, a get well card here for Governor Hogan. We're going to send along with a package. So as you folks are here, if you can please sign that. and. Uh, Unfortunately, we don't have our new flag here. I think that's still with Councilman Howe. And, mm -hmm. um, so she brought it down. No, I, actually, I brought it down to Ocean City, and she's going to bring it back. We do um, have, we have one that she has with the friends, but we do have one hanging out. Okay, right, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we'll have one for here and one for there. It's, mm -hmm. Essentially, it's pretty much the same flag, but it's a navy blue, so anyone who hasn't seen it has a, has a nice uh, new look to it as opposed to the one that was up here with the, the cigarette burn in it, which I'm assuming was not you. It's not me. No. All right, that's all I have. Turn it over to uh, Steve Miller. Uh, we have a swearing in. Uh, Mr. Uh, oh, you're right. They're here in my hands. Okay, we actually, and we have ants. That's not good. Okay, um, we'll do this one now. We have, uh, we have two folks on the uh, Planning and Zoning Commission who have been there for a while, been there since I was there. Um, so Scott Henderson is here, and... Uh, I guess it's agreed to take another tour of duty. Right. <laughs> All right, so, if, um, so I'll say aye and state your name, and I'll read the whole thing. You can say I do. Okay. Aye, Scott Henderson. I do affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and I will be faithful and will bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland, and will support the Constitution and laws thereof, and that I will, to the best of my skill and judgment, diligently and faithfully, without partiality or prejudice, execute the Office of Planning and Zoning Commission, alternate member according to the Constitution and laws of the state. I will. All right, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> so 
So, Steve, do you know um, if Alex is coming in tonight? I can't answer that. Alex was notified. Uh, I don't know. Possibly something came up at work. He couldn't make it. Okay. So. We'll, we'll catch up with him. And uh, I know he's here locally often. He's available, so. All right, good catch. Now we'll move on to the town administrator. Okay, well, uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with the June 2015 administrative report. Uh, our SHA projects, I met with SHA representatives and also reps from Miller's Market on June 17th. Uh, we discussed the Route 27 Westminster Street intersection as well as the entrance into Miller's Market. Uh, SHA engineers are looking into this. And uh, as we all know, there's long range plans for the area, but our discussion centered around short term and immediate solutions for that intersection and also the entrance. Uh, actually, uh, I was in contact with SHA today. Uh, as Chief Heswell test to, we've had two accidents at the entrance to Miller's Market in the last 14 days. So they are feverishly looking into what can be done temporarily out there to uh, you know, slow down the accidents at intersection. Can I interrupt you before you go on to sure. the next stuff? A couple of years ago, we had talked about some alternative proposals. I know we've done this every couple of years um, in that stretch from Route 30 down to Westminster Street. Mm -hmm. And the, the speed got reduced, I think, from 40 to 30 after there was a failure at Westminster Street a number of years back. Okay. And then that's kind of where we've left it, mm -hmm. uh, or we, the state. Um, could we include maybe some of our proposals are in the discussion? Some of the things that were brought up, we probably have some notes someplace, but I know some of the items were talked about narrowing the white lines or having the white lines come in and wave to create a visual um, impediment that will subconsciously help slow people down. So I think if, if this result that comes back or what the state comes back with is like, well, it's 30, let's put it to 25, you know, we're still getting 80% of the people that are driving the same speed regardless of what the speed limit is. Correct. And we can't be in, in charge of 24 hour enforcement there. Correct. Yeah, I think the, some of the ideas that we came up with uh, out there on site, uh, now of course the representative has to take it back to his traffic engineers, but some of the short term items we talked about was, as you said, readjusting the white lines, the possibility of rumble strips, uh, a couple other items to, to make the people aware, hey, you're coming up to a busy intersection. And, you know, long term, we're not ruling out, SHA is not ruling out, you know, a traffic signal at the intersection of Westminster Street. And 27 right there so those are long-term items yeah I, it, and I could see over the next decade that probably coming in uh, just like I think one's going to be eventually at Miller Station or, or Albert Rail rather not Miller Station and Albert right. Rail correct in 27 but uh, even if there's a light there if it's green 75 80 percent of the drivers coming in or going out are still gonna be going at same speed at Miller's Market correct, correct. so the relative safety or danger of somebody pulling in or out still the same or maybe there's signage you know right at you know not advertising millers but making somebody aware like, I, I don't know what the right answer is well there there was some talk when we met you know some type of uh warning flasher something to make the people aware you know on the uh, impending intersection coming up with the entrance so there's things that they're you know that they're considering looking at okay and that's all i just wanted to Make sure that it, they were just weren't going to come back. With, let's go from 30 to 25 sure. and assume it's going to be fine. Right. We'll, we'll pass that. I will pass that along. Okay. Uh, the Sheets project, there's been no movement on the actual building itself. Uh, we did receive correspondence from MDE that based on the data that they received in regards to the MTB remediation project, uh, Sheets can discontinue the remediation process and abandon all monitoring wells. I have heartburn with that. Uh, we're drafting a letter to MDE. We're also drafting a letter to Environmental Alliance, the environmental group for uh, Sheets, and express our concern. There's nothing in the, um, basically, the, the uh, stopping letter from MDE that protects the town. And I want to make sure that there's issues, you know, that's addressed, that if this problem arises during construction or after construction or before construction, that the town has protection on our water supplies. So we're in the process of drafting that letter. The other thing that bothers me is abandoning the wells on our property. If you recall, we gave Sheets permission to drill four wells on our property. Uh, I don't want to abandon those wells. I want to keep those wells out there. I want to keep them open. 
and that's one of the other items that we're going to address in the letter to both MDE and Sheets. So, uh, looking out for the town's water supply. Steve. Yes. Wasn't there a mention a couple of years ago that one of the reasons they weren't going to renovate because for fear that there was something other than leakage from the tanks that was the problem? And that's a good possibility. So if they dig up everything, it could. Yes. It, you know, it, release whatever. That you're absolutely right, and that's what we want to look ahead, you know, and make sure that once you know they start digging for the foundation and digging for other items around there, that they don't hit a pocket of the product, and then that escapes, and then you know we have no recourse to come back. So, uh, yes. So we have no authority as far as you know, <clears throat> making sure that Sheets does this. Uh, we we have enough weight that we can. Convince MDE I'm saying maybe to make we, maybe you're, you're onto something. We should do it until the project is completed, or a time period afterwards. Yeah. Also, yes, correct. So we're we're working on that. Yes. Uh, the town hall police station bids were open on June 30th. We had six general contractors bid on the project. Uh, Breach Bill and, and Hellman was a low bid, and we're currently reviewing the bid with our contractor and architect on that. Uh, Breach Bill and Hellman are out of uh, Chambersburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, they've done numerous jobs in the Carroll County area, so they're familiar with the Carroll County Building Code. So I'll report back more next month on that. Uh, and my number four item can be taken off the floodplain resolution and ordinance corrections as per FEMA. That will be coming back to you folks in August. As you recall, back uh, last month you approved the resolution. Uh, FEMA came back with some additional wording they wanted in the resolution, so we pulled that back till August. So we're sh make sure the wording's correct, make sure ME, uh, MDE's happy with it, and make sure the county's happy with it. So I'm not making any moves on that till August. Uh, I've supplied you a monthly status report on code enforcement. Under miscellaneous items, on June 10th, Kelly and I met with Mr. Mark Ripper, the county rep in charge of the county's fiber optic system. Uh, Mark gave Kelly and I some very good information on how the town can utilize the uh, system in the, in the future. On June 18th, I attended the Utilities Advisory Council meeting at the county. On June 24th, Kelly and I had the pleasure of meeting with Ms. Mary O'Keefe, who is community liaison for U.S. Congressman Andy Harris. Ms. O'Keefe supplied Kelly and I with some very good information on grants and contact information. Uh, she's been supplying us information ever since we met via email, so that was that was a good contact. <coughs> Excuse me, youth representative. As you know, Miss Singer has graduated high school, and uh, I would personally like uh, the mayor and council to look into a replacement to replace her. Um, it would be nice to get a junior. That way, we uh, Natalie was a junior when we brought her on board, and we we were pretty happy with her for two years. So. Uh, I'd like to see uh, see her replaced. Uh, also, something else that's not on your report is uh, members of our staff have re been reviewing sections of the charter and code. So hopefully over the next three months, we'll be bombarding you with some changes that we would like to see. Uh, the larger sections of the code are pretty straightforward. They're pretty decent. The zoning section is good. Uh, the water and sewer are good, but it's the other sections that need some work done. So staff's been working on that. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, moving right along, the June 2015 Public Works Report under water. You have in front of you the monthly water and wastewater status report for June. One thing I want you to keep in mind, uh, keep, your, keep your eyes on the amount of uh, gallons per day that's treated at our wastewater treatment plant. You can see those numbers have steadily come down since we did the lining project. So we're pretty happy with those numbers. The heavy rainfalls we've had over the past several months has no effect whatsoever with the flow coming into the plant. We have one wet well at one of our stations that's going to be sealed up over the next week or so, so that ought to reduce the flow a little bit more coming into there. Our folks replaced the fire hydrant at Route 27 Westminster Street, and we did a well pump replacement at Ferrier Road Well B. Under wastewater, uh, general O&M, uh, we did some rewiring on our grid removal system. Uh, the alternating switch on the effluent pumps at uh, the wastewater plant was replaced. And we want to welcome Mark Leister to the town staff as a wastewater operator. Under stormwater, our storm drain inlet repairs are complete. That was 16 repairs. 
uh, our operators took some training on July 9th. 11 DPW employees took, care, uh, took training on that day. I have some action items tonight. Uh, we have the inclusive playground equipment bid, and we have the skate park pad bid. And then I'd also announce, I'd like to announce that we did receive preliminary approval from community parks and playgrounds for $85,000 uh, pending uh, approval from the Maryland Board of Public Works. So, <coughs> excuse me, that's about it. Any other questions on the town administrator or public works side? Police report, Chief. Okay. <coughs> we handled 63 calls of service this month. Uh, we did have, have to criminally charge 11 persons. Uh, the arrest consisted of uh, three for felony theft, one for assault, one for drug possession, one for DUI, and the other one for five for traffic related charges. Uh, we did have uh, three thefts, two are cleared out of those three arrests I just talked about. We had our first burglary for the year. Uh, that involved uh, a couple repeat offenders that moved into the community. We believe they know who did the crime. We just don't know who did it yet. There's communication going between us to try to find out who exactly did the burglary. We do believe it's drug related, but that's just uh, suspicion on our side right now. Uh, we conducted 135 traffic enforcement stops, all complaint driven. 47 citations were issued, 88 warnings. Primary focus was North Carroll, North Carroll Farms. Uh, I got to tell you, most of the offenders reside in North Carroll Farms, Park Ridge, all through there. Uh, that's why the majority of the warnings came across, and apparently that's not working. There was additional traffic enforcement that was conducted on Main Street. Um, for the sake of crime, last year, uh, the same time period, we had 19 Part 1 crimes. This year, we have nine. Uh, the county has experienced 101 overdose cases. There have been 13 fatalities so far, 34 of which are direct relation to heroin. As far as the municipalities go, Hampstead has three, Tawnytown has five, Westminster has 15. The other numbers are surrounding. Manchester has zero, and Sykesville has zero. Uh, we have National Night, come, National Night Out coming up on August 4th. Uh, we're getting a good turnout. A lot of people in the community want to help. There's going to be a good police contingent, a good fire contingent, uh, some business people from Mamas is going to help, and uh, I think we have some donations coming from Walmart, Dick's Sporting Goods, and Long, Target. Yeah. Long and Foster Realtor, Miller's Market. Yeah. I got to send a thank you out to uh, Girl Scout Troop 1090 for the cookies. They delivered several boxes of cookies over to the police department showing appreciation for the officers and what they do in the community. And according to one of the girls, there were several donations from the community to make sure that they gave them to us. That's about it. Any for the chief? Um, I did want to publicly recognize uh, Chief Hess too. We had. Uh, Carnival time is always a, a tough time here in Fourth of July in Manchester. From a, the standpoint of, it really requires all of our resources to be up and around the carnival grounds during, especially during things like the, the fireworks on Fourth of July. While at the same time, there's things going on in neighborhoods and we're seeing a lot of complaints. So, um, great job and good job to, to all of our guys to, to balance those two, and then to to respond when necessary appropriately to people that that called in with some concerns. So that would be something that's a constant thing for us because we can't have, mm -hmm. like Halloween, we have somebody in every neighborhood. We can't have someone in every neighborhood and everybody at the carnival grounds. So, But we, I think we did a pretty good job at balancing those two things and keeping everything under control. Um, and one thing you didn't get to, I think, just warrants um, pointing out here that this time last year we had 19 reported Part 1 crimes and this year 9. Yes. So in terms of Part 1 reported crimes, we're down a little over 50 percent from last year yes sir and last year was a good year yes yes we had a decline last year as well okay anything else for the chief no. all right we are moving right along uh banner city i'm gonna i asked tammy councilman councilwoman tammy black i'm sorry to mm -hmm. come in do, do you mind coming up so i wanted you to 
talk a little bit and you can present this to the town. So while, while Tammy's coming up, um, I asked to come in and, and do it. You guys might have a paper. We can pass that down yep. and hand that to Tammy. So Tammy did a lot of work and was really instrumental in getting Manchester the designation of MML Banner City this year. So we were one of five new towns and cities in the state of Maryland to get that designation. Um, and and it's, it's important, it's prestigious. Uh, a lot of work went into it. Um, and it's really something that's designed from MML to encourage participation in their chapters, in their trainings, to encourage elected officials and, and town officials to stay up to beat on, on what's going on, to participate in organizing community activities and in really pushing out communications to the public and to each other. So if you could speak to for a few minutes on, on, on what you did and the amount of work that went in and why this is important. Um, but I want to thank you, you personally for really getting us over, getting across, getting us across the goal line to yeah. get this thing done. Yeah. Uh, it was my pleasure um, and an honor for the town. So just to recap on what Mayor Warner said, the municipalities who are designated as banner cities or towns are recognized among their peers as an active participant in showcasing municipal government and how it works working together as a town to help strengthen their membership league, foster goodwill by educating youth about municipal government, maximize their MML, which is Maryland Municipality League membership, by taking part in league programs and activities, and ensures the voice of their municipality is heard on issues relevant to the membership and in matters of legislative priorities. And so the things that we did in Manchester, first of all, there had to be a um, 50 percent or greater participation in um, state MML activities as well as local chapter activities and so um, we had to have that validated and signed off on and we accomplished that um, over the past year we also were able to feature the national night out and our success and all the news articles and all the things that went along with that were submitted um, for approval and then also um, on May the 14th um, myself, Steve Miller, and Kelly Baldwin, we had the um, privilege of going to Manchester Valley High School and sharing about municipal government to one of the high school classes there um, with um, teacher Beth Chrisman. And so that was, a, that was a good time. That was also featured in the newspaper and um, a lot of the students, um, I think Mayor, one of your sons was in the class too. Did he tell you how wonderful it was? And <laughs> <laughs> that one doesn't tell me anything. <laughs> <laughs> he was pretty quiet in the class too. Um, but there was actually a lot of participation. The teachers were really excited. And what's, uh, I think, really, I think, um, beneficial or valuable about this program, because I didn't realize it until I actually went through the process, was that um, teacher Christman said that there is, there's no, and perhaps, you know, um, Council uh, Woman Warner can confirm, there's no standard curriculum for municipal government teaching in the school system, because it varies so much from town to town. Um, so we were able to talk about the different models, um, especially in Maryland, and then what Manchester's model um, looks like and how our leadership and our, um, our organizational chart um, flows and how that extends into the community at large. So um, that, was, that was good, I think, for all of us who were involved in that. And then we have to be a part of an, an academy for excellence in local government. So I know that several of us, I know Mayor Warner, Myself, I'm not sure who, who all has been a part of this, but that's a great opportunity too, to learn about local government and how to advocate um, for the needs of the towns and municipalities on a local, broader state level, and then even regional um, as it impacts through federal government uh, mandates and so forth. So um, we had to participate in that and show our, our participation, if you will, and then um, be able to show that we've been um, working with the schools and we've had you know the student um, representation and so forth and um, I believe some other students have been a part of the, the town's uh, mentoring program so anyway we we made it we were as you said I believe one of five um, that got in this year and so I think it's something that um, we can continue to um, strive to be um, current with and especially I said that high school component was I thought was really valuable and didn't realize the impact of that until we actually had completed it. So um, so this is the plaque. I guess every year, like how does this work? So my understanding wasn't, of course, this is my first time at this luncheon where they give this thing out. But yeah. um, 
if you qualify and you receive the award in subsequent years, you go back and you'll get like a, a plate. Another plate. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's okay. Like on it. So you just have to show again kind of what your activities are. I think you have to go through the process all over again and resubmit the things that you've done, either if there's a multi-year component to it or right. that would be applicable to that year. Okay. So a lot of the things that have already been done can carry over from year to year, but it's those activities that I just mentioned um, that have to be revalidated. So anyway, thank you for inviting me. And Absolutely. Thank, thank you for sharing about it. Thank you for everything. All right, so we're on to questions and comments from the community. Anybody sign up? <coughs> Uh, Mr. Uh, Lou Kurzmiller, if you mind coming up to the mic, and um, for anyone that does come up to the mic, if you don't mind, again, just stating sure. your name and, and your address, that way I don't have to try to do it and it's on to the record. <clears throat> okay, my name is Lou Kurzmiller. Uh, I live at 2510 High Crest Court, uh, and um, my question, this stems from our meeting at the meet and greet I guess back in March or April, but the thing is this, I mentioned at the time, I would ask a consideration for the speed limit in the Carroll Farms to be, to be uh, changed to 25. This is a, for consistency only in that Susan Ann and Bert Fowler are all 25 and doesn't seem to be any problem. Um, some other jurisdictions around in the, area, in the area are also that and don't seem to be a problem. So uh, I personally um, have had some, you know, concerns with the speed limit as it is and whatever i think it might just be just to be consistent i think it's a good idea and as i said i mentioned and i just wanted to follow up on this and just come uh, forward with this right i remember you and i had the conversation mm -hmm. um you know we have talked a little bit and this is something that's come up a couple times over the past few years where we have these five mile an hour differences in in what appear to be kind of similar type roads and I guess we you could name differences between the roads like mm -hmm. well this one has a double yellow line and well this one's mm -hmm. you know, eight feet wider and, and and that sort of thing but um, it it wouldn't hurt us to I guess to look and, and drive those roads and see um, it, you know if some consistency can mm -hmm. can be right. drawn out between some of the areas and then the flip side of that and this I guess is as much as laying it all on the table right so the concern every time you raise the speed limit as well you change something from 20 to 30, everyone's really going to go 40. And 40 is right, not safe. Right. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, like I said, it's the individual and what they do, which is, right. I mean, they're probably going to go higher anyway. So so we'd, we'd have to have some, you know, if we're readjusting things that all look similar to 25 in an area versus 20 or to 25 from 30, just have some, okay. um, I guess, un understanding on, on, the, on the enforcement and community uh, mm -hmm you know, information and side of, you know, if this says 30, then 39 is not acceptable. Right, gotcha. So, mm -hmm. Or if this is 25, 34, you know what I'm saying. But mm -hmm. So Chief can, and Steve, can, can we take a look at that in some of those areas and see what... Um, you want to drop down to 25, right? Up to 20. Up to 25. It's at 20. It's 20. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's... So I think what we'd want to look at is... And from our perspective, right, as soon as we have speed limits, the people, you know, communicate a lot. Or they'll, they'll write in and, and come in and have an opinion. And I understand your point because the surrounding areas are mm -hmm. 25, then they'll have one piece that's 20. Um, mm -hmm. But there's some streets where going to 25 may not be the best idea. You know, and, and we're already battling. Mm -hmm. um, okay, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I think it's worth a fresh look, though. I think is the best way to put it. it. So why don't we? I mean, I don't exactly have an opinion. I have to, I have to go out there and sit and. I tell the chief. I mean, if it don't happen, I'm not one to beat a dead horse. So right. this is the only time I'll be up there. Yeah. Matt, we appreciate you coming in. We were just looking at the uh, the way the charter is reading right now. Is the way the charter reads? We have different speeds for different streets in there, and then if it's absent, it's twenty. Mm -hmm. That's the way I try to read. It's mm -hmm. mentioned, it's different, everything else is important. Right. So. so we have the ability to change them, um, but it's always worth taking you know, a fresh look at mm -hmm. and uh, take, make an honest evaluation about 
is this the right speed for this road and mm -hmm. for this area? Okay, appreciate it. Yeah, just like I say, if I were to take a look and if, if it's it is great, if it isn't okay, then that's just the way it is. But uh, um, I personally didn't care for twenty and for a number of reasons. But uh, oh, I get it. I know. You know, like so, so here I am. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah it, I think when we've done things like this in the past, and it's been a few years since we changed the speed limit, other than the one on thirty, is that we would try to push as much information out as we could to solicit feedback mm -hmm. because you change one up or one down and you ruffle feathers on 50% right. of the people either way. Right, I understand. So let's, um, I mean, stay in contact with us and, um, you know, you can okay. call okay. in and, you know, to get a hold of me or. Yeah, now's the time to do it because that is one of the sections in the charter that we're taking a hard look at. So now's the time to, to take a hard look at all of our streets if we want to adjust them. Okay, well, I appreciate the consideration yeah. then, and thank Good. you. Yeah, thank absolutely. You. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thanks for coming in. I'm Mike Stewart. Yes, good evening, Council. Mike Stewart, 2817 Ridgely um, Court. While you're looking at the um, charter and the code, I, I urge you to do something to make it consistent with county standards. And I'm specifically referring to Chapter 11 of County Standards, which was passed in 2013, which makes English the official language of Carroll County government. Um, there are exceptions, of course, for public health and safety. But what it boils down to is that no one can force uh, county government to engage uh, in official uh, business, either written or oral, in any language other than English. Um, and for purpose of coordinating things with the county, um, I believe all the towns should adopt a similar ordinance. Um, think about uh, the zoning process when you're building. You go to um, zoning at the county, then you come here, pay your $50 or whatever the fee is, and get your certificate and go back to permits. Um, now, the county only has to print things in English, and they'll speak English there, but if someone today would say that, you know, we need things in Chinese here in Manchester, there'd be nothing to stop it. And if you do one, you have to print them in all the languages. Go to, go to the district court in Montgomery County and sit there during the day and you tell me how it goes. So I suggest if you're looking at the code, um, if we could adopt something along the line of Chapter 11 in the, in the county ordinance, which was adopted, and it was in the news recently um, in the Times, the new, um, I believe Paul Milton at the Times, the new editor made a stir about having it repealed, but all five of the commissioners, uh, the new commissioners have voiced their continued support for um, the ordinance passed in 2013. So if you're going to look at the code I suggest that you just for consistency's sake be and be the first municipality to do it in uh, in Carroll County. Thank you for your time. All right, thanks. Anybody else? All right. And now we'll go to committee reports. Councilman Smith. I don't have a report. The meeting was rescheduled. Okay. Councilman Moore. Uh, we're working on our committee. At the parade, we um, I created handouts about a third of a size sheet, front and back, advertising for National Night Out. I walked the parade route and gave out as many as I could for the <laughs> length of the parade, bouncing back and forth the street, and invited people to come out and gave them some information about when it was. We did have a small stack of the flyers left, so we asked the Mer Manchester merchants if they'd be willing to put them in their bags that they handed out at the carnival as well. So we got a, a good stack of them out to help advertise that. Perfect. Hello. Regarding mom, I have nothing to report at this time. The next meeting is this Thursday at Spargos, and I have yet to get up to speed with the sustainability task force, but that's the top of my agenda. Perfect. And the other two councilmen or council persons are on vacation, and we're currently in search of a youth representative. Anything else to offer this board? Mayor, I have two action items that okay. we have to take care of. Yep. Uh, one thing also I left out of my report, it was my fault. Uh, I want to thank uh, Eagle Scout candidate Reed Latterer. Uh, he did uh, storm drain stenciling on Saturday. They actually, uh, Troop 320 and his group actually did 80 inlets in Manchester Farms. So I'm pretty happy with that. That information is going to be passed on over to the county. So we can get uh, some credit for that. So they did a fantastic job. The two action items that I mentioned before that I have is uh, for the skate park pad. And this is going to be uh, located off of Water Street. Uh, we put it out on bid. We received two bids back. 
one from Bullinger and Brooks Construction for $23,826, and one from Bosley Construction for $25,485. Uh, staff recommendation is to go with Bullinger and Brooks Construction for $23,826. Have we used them before? Yes. Okay. Is this pad the same dimensions as the original one? Yeah, uh, actually it's, it's uh, two foot. Actually the original one's 90 by 60. This one's 92 Correct. by 62. Yes, a little bit bigger. Okay. All right, I'll make a motion that we accept the bid from Bollinger and Brooks Construction in the amount of $23,826 in regard to the skate park pad. And I'll second it. I motion to second the discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Okay, the next action item is the inclusive playground equipment. And we put this out on bid. And the, uh, we received one bid back, company Sparks at Play. As you can see, the information that Kelly has put together, uh, this is part of the community uh, playground at Parks and Playgrounds grant, which we received 45,000. Uh, the town of Manchester is going to put 5,000 into it. And we're looking at Haley's wish putting additional 10,000. So we're looking at a, a cost of the equipment for $71,735. As you read down uh, into the uh, information, we talked to Miss Bridget Miller of Haley's Wish, and she is uh, Haley's Wish is willing to go and add another $5,000, bringing their total to $15,000. Unfortunately, as you read down through there, uh, we're 11,000. $735 short. Uh, our recommendation is to uh, pull that $11,000 out of our uh, parks fee because it is a capital budget item. Um, that is our recommendation. You can see what's in the current park savings account as of June 30th. So uh, that's up to the council if they, the Marina Council, if they want to go that route. Steve, do we have a, a explanations to why we only got one bid? No, the information, uh, the bid was put out uh, basically around that equipment, but the, the other vendors, you know, if they could show that they could be equal to that uh, piece of equipment, that's fine. And, and nobody responded back to us on that. And basically all of our bids are like that, you know. Uh, we may uh, like a certain type of dump truck. But if there's another type of dump truck out there that is equal to, yeah, we'll take a look at it. They have in our in our contract document they have to prove to us that it's equal to. But in, in this case no one bid bid on a project. So. so did you did you review and I know this this playground equipment and particularly this on inclusive playground equipment it is extremely expensive and mm -hmm. um, at a number of the conventions where we talk with vendors and they have these sort of things and reviewing some pricing. Now, I didn't go through the list of the items that we're going to put into the inclusive playground and then try to add that up and see mm -hmm. if this number falls in there. My, my guess after seeing the plans and knowing what these things cost is it, it is a, an extremely competitive price. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yes. Have you, have you seen these playgrounds that cost? Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't look like anything. It costs $150,000 or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. So I, there is markup in these, in these things, but you have to buy from a couple right, of vendors that are out there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So are we making a motion to approve the money that comes out of the fund, or what do we need to? Well, I think that we can do everything. And just to, to give you guys some color, we have, probably haven't spent money out of this fund in a number of years now. Right. Um, in it, fact, I don't know if we've ever touched the fund. Nah. Okay. We approved money at one point to do some work on the lights, and then we paused and didn't spend it because we were going to go the multi-year Correct. The grant route. That's correct. And then rather than patchwork what we have up there, we're going to try to mm -hmm. come up with a solution yes. to fix these things long term. So, yeah, maybe we haven't. I, don't, I know we've talked about it a couple right. times. Right. Um, we've talked about buying a, some sort of gator or something to help the guys that are cleaning up the trash and the, mm -hmm. empty the dumpsters, and we didn't do that either. But, no, we didn't. Um, so it's, it's primarily funded by impact fees has been there so as, as the town really grew and, and then the intent of those funds is to provide for mm -hmm. capital items for improvement or replacement or additions as the community 
theoretically grew so that you're providing services that, you know, that are commensurate with the population. So it's an appropriate expenditure, mm -hmm. meaning we're... I got you. And actually, it's a total of 11 coming out of that. Right. Account. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all the rest of the funding is there. Okay. So, and then that, that's the staff recommendation. Correct. So I, I would support that recommendation that we... Not it's really up to you I guys. Agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. And, and again, we, Kelly and I, have been in constant contact through this whole project with, with uh, Mrs. Miller. And she's very happy with what's taking place. She's very thankful for what the town's doing. Uh, our pad for this, this spot is actually being worked on. It was started on today. So we're moving right ahead. We're looking at uh, the possibility of a community build sometime late September, beginning of October. That's what we're aiming for. Yeah, I think it's going to be a nice project. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts? I think we should have the opportunity. Okay. Go ahead. I make a motion that we contribute an additional $11,735 taken from the Park Service Savings uh, in regard to the new inclusive playground equipment at Christmas Tree Park. I'll second it. So motion and second. Any discussion? All's in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right, carries. So that's good. Steve, can you no notify them? Um, yes, uh, question. Can you just do a motion to actually not purchase it? Like so rather than appropriate it to purchase it. Can we have a second motion to make the purchase? <laughs> so I guess we did, we, that was the appropriation. Okay. I make a motion that we purchase the equipment needed for the inclusive playground at $71,735. I'll second that motion. All right, motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? Okay, so that, I guess not now I see what's going on, is that we're 11000 so we have the funding of 60000 for the equipment. Mm -hmm. For sixty five, right, and we're coming in 11000 short. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that we're funding that. Well, actually, with 65, we're no longer 11,000 short. Is that right, Steve? Are we 11,000 short with the 65,000 because Haley Swish Foundation added the five? Yes, they added five more thousand. So yeah, their total contribution 15. is 15,000. Right. Well, wouldn't this number so here be 65, not 60? Right. This, this one I gave you up front is what it was in the original request. That was um, original. From what well, we asked for at Community Parks and Playground because we didn't know the cost. Right, right. So when we have been talking to Bridget um, just today, we can't tell what the prices were, and she said, well, I can give you another five to make it 15. You have 15 from you know, us, 45 from the state. I got you. I think what the question is. And then total is 11. Right. So, all right. I think the question is, I think Vince and I are on the same page. So you have local funds, five. Mm -hmm. You had Haley's Wish, 10. They've right. now made that 15. Right. You have Community Parks and Playground, Grant of 45 that was original equals 60 is right. the original and then uh, Mrs. Miller said we have an additional five for right. you so that brings that to 65 right so, so that went from 60 to 65 but we're saying the shortfall is 11 375 it's actually six, six. Right. right so okay the, I should have said it's an additional it should have been total coming out of that account ah yeah that's the total of 11 that, that's, yeah. Yeah. That's okay how you, and that's how you did the motion it was 11,000 yeah I did yeah so mm -hmm. Okay, it's All just right. the way it was broken down, mm -hmm. so it's yeah. we're good. Correct. Right. So our total contribution from to the town is eleven seven thirty five, but that includes the local funds mentioned at the top of the page of five thousand. Exactly. Right. Can we Got make it. sure that's reflected in the minutes? Because yep. mm -hmm. I think then this memo is a little bit misleading. I it is. Just it's not. It's <laughs> the, the way it's worded. It could be confusing. Yeah. Right. Right. I think as long as we get right in the in the minutes, that we should be good. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a couple things to to look at too once we get into this. Um, as I mentioned in my report, we did receive preliminary approval for $85,000 for the new lighting up at the athletic field. Unfortunately, that project, you're looking at probably a quarter of a million dollars. So we have to put our thinking hats on on what we're going to be doing with that. The project that's right at the horizon, which you approved for the pad for the skate park, is the cost of some new ramps. So we may have to, in the next several months or maybe even longer,
look at uh, looking at that park service fee to pull some monies out of there to uh, purchase ramps, new ramps for that site up there. So just keep that in right. Mind. But that's based on what is unsalvageable in the from room. the site from the current. We'll site. see what we can correct. What we can salvage. That's correct. Room. That's correct. Yes. Um, spe speaking of that, and not this was an agenda item, but the um, as far as the lights at the athletic field, um, Musco Lighting has a pretty big presence um, at the convention. And I've, I've talked to some folks there, you know, year over year in a, mm -hmm. in a friendly way. But I guess they're, they have some some financing options and some, some packages they can put together where they may be more um, experienced in pushing for some of these grants and ways to pay for these mm -hmm. things than, than we are. Right. So if everybody's, you know, I guess would be agreeable to at least hearing what they had to say. And that, that's a good outlet, Mayor, because um, my, my outlet through BG&E, you know, kind of fell through. Uh, I thought that was a good option, but I haven't heard anything back from those folks. So uh, I'll get in contact with, with Moscow. I've heard of them. It's, it's Moscow, yeah. Moscow. Uh, I think and it's M-U-S-C-O. Okay. But I guess ultimately from, you know, they're a business, so they know right. that towns like this or a school that's replacing it may not be able to write a check for the full amount. Mm -hmm. So they know how to how to work through the grant system and uh, how to finance things over over time mm -hmm. slash look at getting credits back from BG and E for changing out light bulbs. Right. And then coming up with a real package rather than it seeming like, oh we couldn't write a check for, yeah. for when two we're looking at a project like that, right? We want to get all the key players on board. Yeah. You know, the town, the rec council. You know the independence. I mean, everybody's got to come on board with this. So, yeah. You know. And I think, General, if you hear that when we began this discussion, but the and Steve has more history on this than I do. But the the lighting that's up at Christmas Tree Park, you have these aging wood mm -hmm. poles, some of which are starting to rot down beneath the surface, and some of the, the cross T bars we've had actually not just the, the lighting are old and the ballast are old and it's dangerous to get there and change them, but we've had the cross bars come down. Mm. So as it gets windy, and things it's a big continue, liability. Yeah, I, it's things up there. We don't have an exact age. Some between thirty and forty years old, depending on on which ones and when we're different mm -hmm. ages. But so, do we I, need to think about bracing these poles? The the poles themselves aren't bad. It, it's the crossbars that we keep an eye on. I mean, we look at those at least at least once every three weeks. I mean, physically look at, you know, make sure they're okay, especially after a windstorm. And, uh, so it's our highest traveled, most used piece of property in town. Right. Where literally every weekend, you know, you could have thousands of people in and out, particularly mm -hmm. during when the weather's nice. Um, and if one of those things were to come down and hit somebody, it'd be bad news. Not more mm -hmm. than replacing the lights. Right. <laughs> so that's what we've been, we've been looking at this. We have passed work a couple of things. Mm -hmm. uh, the rec, we work with the rec council to, um, with the baseball and football programs to, to, to work together. But at some point, we're going to have to come up with a solution to either have them not be there or replace it and keep the high use of those fields up. Uh, one last item. Unfortunately, Alex will not be here. Uh, a Baltimore City paramedic was seriously injured, and he's still held over at work. Hmm. So Alex will not make it. Uh, hopefully, that turns out well. All right, we'll get with Alex and then thought some prayers for that uh, paramedic. Anything else for this group? Right, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second the motion to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Good night.